What's up everybody welcome back to another video. In this episode we're going to be going over how to use the HTML script tag to apply JavaScript to our HTML documents. This is going to be an introduction video. We're not going to be going deep into JavaScript in this video but I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to get started and how to apply JavaScript to your document. As always code snippets can be found on my website pixelmerb.com. You can navigate to the different sections. You can go to the actual tutorial and you can easily copy the code snippets to your clipboard and paste them in your IDE or text editor. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon so that way whenever I create new videos, you'll be notified. Alright, so we're going to go over to some of our files over here and we're going to see how we can use JavaScript with our HTML documents. So let's go to our text editor and we're going to continue to use Visual Studio Code for these tutorials, but you could use any editor that you're familiar with. All right, so I'm on my index.html document file. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to create an h2 tag. This is the opening and closing h2 tag right there. Inside of the opening h2 tag, I'm going to give it an ID of insert. And right now there's nothing inside of here. I'm going to save that and I'm going to go down towards the bottom of the page. And this is what you're normally going to see done. You're going to see script tags towards the bottom section in this manner. So we have our lesser than symbol followed by script and then the greater than symbol. And then we have our closing script tag over here with the forward slash right there. So I'm going to go in between both, go to new lines. Let me do some separation over here just to make it easier to see. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how you can use JavaScript in this document to change some of the content. You can even change the styling or you can have some effects take place by targeting the actual tags, elements, and things of that nature. So the first one I'm going to show you is document.getElement by ID. So the first thing to note is you're going to want to make sure that you have it in this manner. Document lowercase period get the G is lowercase element the E is uppercase by the B is uppercase then ID the I is uppercase. So now we're going to be targeting a specific ID in this HTML document. So then I'll have my opening and closing parentheses opening and closing quotation marks and then I'm going to target that particular ID I gave to the H2 which is insert and then outside of the closing parentheses right there what I'm going to do is put in a period and then type out inner HTML then assign it with the equal sign symbol right there opening and closing quotation marks hello world and then I'll have my semicolon placed right here outside of the closing quotation mark. All right, let's save that. Make sure this line looks just like this. We have document dot get elements by ID. We're targeting that ID above that's insert and now we're going to use inner HTML to add this string right here. Hello world. If we scroll up you see right now this is empty. Save your document. Let's go back to the browser and let's see if this works. Okay, so before we reload the page, just go over here into your developer console and you can see that we have this structure. We have the body tag, we have the H1, then we have the paragraph. The H2 is not here yet. We haven't reloaded. Let's reload now. And now you see that we have hello world is being inserted into this H2 tag because it has the ID of insert. And if we scroll down, you see you have this right here. This is our opening script tag and our closing script tag. And then we have the document.getElements by ID, insert, and then inner HTML with hello world. Now you can play around with it here. Let's see if that's going to work. And it didn't work here. Why is that? Well, if you want to play around with JavaScript and the developer tools, you would go over here to the console, and this is where you can actually type out your JavaScript here. And you can see what takes place. So now we can go over here and say document. I'm going to tab it there. Dot get. I'll tab it there. You see that we have the various different types of um commands we can input. We can target by the ID, by class name, by name, by tag name etc. But we're going to go back here to ID. I'll tab that and I'll say insert inner HTML 
And now, once you do that, you see it changed the actual element right here from hello world to hi there. And we did that by using the console. We could also do document, get element by tag name. And over here, we're typing out, will this work? What do you think is going to happen? What we're doing here is we're typing out document.getElementsByTagName body.innerHTML. Will this work? So we're trying to output this string and now let's see if that works. Why didn't that work? If we go back over here, we see nothing's been inserted there, but we got this outputted over here in our console. Now, if you want to do something like that, you go here, document.body.inner then assign it the value you want it to have. Let's see if that works now. And we have it right here. Let's go to our elements and you see we have that there. Now everything else got deleted. That only happened in our console. So you want to be careful using some of these commands and this is just for demonstration purposes. Let's reload the page. Everything's back to normal. Let's go back to our console. And a matter of fact, let's go back to our editor. What I'm going to do now is go over here Put in a generic div tag with an ID of change. I'm going to take the closing part of the div tag. I'm going to cut that out. Go down here and paste it there. Save that real quick. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I want to target this div with the ID of change. So I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to open up another set of script tags here. I'm going to comment this one out just for demonstration purposes. Then I'm going to type out document dot get element by ID. Target the change ID itself. Go outside of the closing parentheses there. Put in a period. And now what I want to do is change the style. So I'm going to say style dot background color. And I'm going to assign it the value of blue. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm using the document dot get element by ID change. I'm using the dot style dot background color, sign it the value of blue. I'm going to save that and let's go back to our browser and see if this works. Before we reload, this is how that looks now. And now let's reload and see if that changes. All right, so you see here that this div right here with the idea of change, which encompasses the H1 heading, the H2, which we commented out at the bottom, and also has this paragraph right here. That background is being changed to blue. You see that right here. So that's how you can change the styling of an element on your HTML document with JavaScript. You can use the document.getElementById change.style.backgroundColor sign the value of blue. We could also go to our console over here and let's see if we can change something over here. Type out document dot get element by ID change dot style dot color and I'll say white. So what do you think is going to happen when we press enter here? What's going to change? Let's find out. All right, so we see that the heading one area, that changed, but this didn't. Why is that? If you go back to our elements, the reason is that the body doesn't have a color set by default. If we go here, the H1 itself doesn't have any inline styles or embedded styles that are setting the color itself, but the paragraph tag does. This has an inline style that's taking priority. So that's why that is not being impacted. This one here has a color of purple that's coming from the embedded style. So again, this goes back into priorities and how cascading styles works. But we see by doing this that the heading one didn't in fact change color. All right, let's go back to our editor. Okay, so let's try something a little bit different. I'm gonna go up here towards the top. I'm gonna comment this div tag out. And over here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a button that we're gonna work with or an input element. So input type button, and then we're going to say value is going to be click me like that. Take that one there. This should be a equal sign right there. So we have input type equals then the quotation marks button. And then outside of that closing quotation mark, we have value equals quotation marks click me. Then outside of here, we're going to do an on click and then assign it the value of an alert. 
we have our opening parentheses and we're going to use our single quotation marks here button has been clicked then outside of that single quotation mark i'm going to close off the parentheses here now i'm going to put in my semicolon then put in my closing part of the input tag itself. So what are we doing here? Well, we created our button here, but now we're using the on click event. And this is another way that JavaScript can work on individual elements on a page. So let's see what happens when we save this and let's go back to our browser. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the element section here and now let's reload the page. Now we see we have this little button right here. I'm going to inspect that. And you see we have our input type button, value click me, on click, alert, button has been clicked. So let's see what happens when we click this here. We get this little alert box that says this page says button has been clicked. Click OK. So that's working. You do it again and you still get that. But we also see we have an error over here. If we click on that, you're going to see the type of error that we have. Down here it says uncaught type error cannot read property style of null at index.html103. So let's click on that and it takes us to where that error is coming from. And if you recall, we had this get element by ID change, we're changing the background color. But if we go over here, we commented that out. So since we commented that out, this is not working the way it should. But for our demonstration, the alert box is working. All right, let's go back to our editor. Let's scroll down to the bottom. We're going to comment this out right here. But now let's say we want to have JavaScript that's going to load on every page. And we don't want to have to continuously put this script tag opening and closing on each individual document. Instead of embedding it on the actual document itself, we can go to the top and we can link to a JavaScript file. So the way to do that, I'm just going to uncomment this here. We could bring this to the same line. But inside the opening script tag, I'm going to give it a space and I'll say source is going to be assigned the value and I want to go to my JavaScript folder into my scripts file. So to do that, put JS scripts.js. So basically what I'm doing is I'm telling the web browser I wanted to go to our JavaScript folder into this file, which is empty right now, and use the JavaScript from there. So what I'll do is I'll uncomment this and then I'll go towards the bottom. I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to copy it. I'll paste it right there. Save it. Go back here. Save this as well. Go back to the top. And now let's go back to our browser and see if that applied or took effect. Let's reload our browser and let's see what happens. Now we have another issue over here. Let's bring this up. Click there and we see what's happening. But now how can we fix this? Let's go back to our editor. What I want to do now is I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to cut it and bring it down towards the bottom of the page. And this is what you're going to see on a lot of different tutorials or websites that they're going to put some of their scripts towards the bottom of the page itself. And the reason is because how the browser scans a document object model. It's going to go from top to bottom and we have some render blocking issues. So this is how or one way you can get around that. Let's see if this works now. Save it. Go back to our browser and let's reload now. And you see it's working right here. We still have this error over here because I believe if we go over here to the head section, we're still referencing it within our head section as well. So let's go back to our editor. Let's scroll to the top. And now let's comment this out right here. Save that and go back to the browser and see if we get rid of that error. Let's reload the page. And now you see that error is gone. But we're referencing the script file at the bottom part of our HTML document. Again, this is normal. This is how you would see it as one way to prevent render blocking or any errors to pop up. But there's another thing you could do as well. Let's go back to our editor. I'm going to show you something different. Right now, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to uncomment this one here in the head. Scroll down. I'm going to comment this out right here. Go back up. And now what I want to do is go over here before the source and I'm going to type out defer. So now what this is going to do or what it should do is allow me to place the script in the head but not run into the errors or not run into performance issues while the browser scans the document object model from top to bottom. It's going to defer the loading of the script until the page loads. Let's see if this works. Let's save it and go back to the browser. 
All right, before we reload, remember we still have the script down here in the footer or in the bottom part of our HTML document. Up here we don't have it yet because we haven't reloaded. And last time when we had the script referenced in the head section, we ran into an error. But now let's see if that still happens. Let's reload. Now we don't have any errors. Go into the head. We see that we're calling this in. If we go down towards the bottom. We see this one's commented out and these are commented out as well. So that's one way you can work with external script files in the head section. You can use defer. You could also use async which is going to asynchronously load the files. But for performance issues and to prevent any errors, the best way to go about it is to use defer itself. All right, so let's go back to our editor and now let's quickly recap this. If you're going to use the script tag in the head section that's going to point to an external script file, you're going to want to use the defer attribute. That's going to make sure you're not going to run into errors and that the page loads before this is really truly referenced. Scroll down and you can have JavaScript inside of the body itself using JavaScript on an actual element itself in this manner. In this case we had input type button value click me and what's taking place here is the on click alert and then button has been clicked. This is almost like an inline style Style, this is inline JavaScript. Or you could have the JavaScript towards the bottom of the page in this manner, where you have the document.getElementById, the ID you're going to target, the method we're going to use with the value. And you got to make sure you have your opening and closing script tags. Now, what happens if a person has JavaScript disabled? You're not really going to find that happening too often, but it can happen. So, what you would do in that case, you would have the no script tag opening and closing and then you could type out you need JavaScript enabled to see this content. Now this would only be referenced if JavaScript was disabled. You wouldn't see this as long as JavaScript is enabled. Again, you don't have to worry about that too much because for the most part, JavaScript is enabled by default on people's web browsers. All right, let's go back to the browser. Another thing you're gonna wanna play around with is get familiar with the console section. I'll do a more thorough tutorial on how to use the console in your web browser, but this is a great way to play around with CSS and JavaScript right there in the browser. You can type out the document, dot get and you see these are uh, popping up element by ID then you would target whatever ID you have so let's say change would be for that one you see what's already applied and you can play around with that so get familiar with that but if we go over here Let's make sure we reload. Let's go down to the bottom. You see you don't see that no script that we had added in our editor. That's only going to be applied if JavaScript is disabled. Now let's see how we can actually disable JavaScript. If you go over here to this section right here, customizing control dev tools, let's go to settings, scroll all the way down to debugger, disable JavaScript, let's X out and reload. Let's see if that worked now. Now you see you have that there. You need JavaScript enabled to see this document. And that's because the no script tags has that right there. But now if we go back to settings and re-enable JavaScript and then reload, scroll down again, you no longer see that because now we have JavaScript enabled. All right, so play around with what you learned. This is not a deep dive into JavaScript. I'll have a separate playlist for that and that's going to be a big one because there's so many things you could do with JavaScript. But this is just how you can get started with JavaScript in your HTML documents with the script tag. Again, you can go to pixelmurb.com. I'll be adding more tutorials and more code snippets here and you could just easily copy and paste them to your clipboard and use them within in your editor itself. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon so that way when I create a new video, you'll be notified. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding.